Good morning and welcome into Hogville Nut YouTube Live. This is it's total solar eclipse Monday in the in a lot of places around the country, especially in Arkansas. But there's a lot of things going in Arkansas uh, right now. I think it's probably, arguably, the biggest hire in the history of the program. When you talk about a John Calipari leaving Kentucky, the ultimate blue blood, arguably the top program of all time. One of those names in college coaching that is at the top. I mean, he's up there with guys like Krzyzewski, Wooden. I mean, you go down a list of, of great coaches, Bobby Knight, iconic names. Make of some of these guys what you will in terms of your personal flavor, what you like. Uh, and, but Cal's been a, another one of those guys. Anytime you have a name like a John Calipari, it is a lightning rod for a lot of things, mostly positive. Uh, and those things happen. But this is a huge hire for the Arkansas Razorbacks. This is a storied, rich basketball program, Arkansas is. It, it, and it goes back to the late 70s. Eddie Sutton, then Nolan Richardson, most recently Eric, Eric Musselman. And so you've had some really big names, some really big games. And you look at postseason, everybody thinks about March Madness. What did you do in March? And all of those coaches had wild success, had Arkansas uh, in the forefront of national conversations. Nothing is like this. Not, I mean, winning a national championship in 93-94 and then getting back to the title game a year later is probably as big in news, and it was on the court. You want those results. You want to win a national title. But only that would rival the news during the final four weekend that was came out last night that Arkansas had lured away John Calipari. Now, look, Calipari, 15 years at Kentucky, and we know that the success level there, up and down of late, especially in the NCAA tournament, uh, but right after the tournament ended, just quickly for, for the Cats out come up, getting bounced out of the first round, uh, you know, a, a statement was put out. It was announced that Calipari would be back. Very big buyout for the school to move on. But he's a guy that his name is synonymous with college basketball. And, you know, here's a guy that's talking about NBA experience, spent, what, four or five seasons with the New Jersey Nets in the 90s before taking over in Memphis building that to a national level program, got to a national title game uh, before being hired at Kentucky. And we know what he's done there. It's, it's, it is the best recruiter. I guess you could say John, John Wooden was the best recruiter ever, 10 straight national titles, and some of the names that came through Westwood out there at UCLA. But in the modern era of the game, and really when you look at a landscape of recruiting, where recruiting became its own sport, you have rankings, star rankings, recruiting's covered, you know, <laughs> you know, by national media, national analysts, almost like the sport itself. John Calipari has been at the top of that. You had Duke under Krzyzewski, some other teams at different times, but consistently the guy that everybody knows is the standard for that. One national title at Kentucky, a national title game at Memphis. And we know Calipari, NCAA infractions, uh, cost a Final Four, you know, got swept from the records when he was at UMass uh, in the 90s. Uh, Something similar, obviously, from his time at Memphis. That team went to a championship game, lost to Kansas in a close game, uh, and Calipari got a title in 2011-2012. But he's taken teams to six Final Fours, two of those wiped away, I just mentioned it, six Final Fours, six SEC championships at Kentucky, six SEC tournament championships at Kentucky, a three-time national coach of the year. I mean, we could go on and on. I mentioned the now Brooklyn Nets, the New Jersey Nets, NBA head coach for a few years, was an assistant at Philadelphia. And there's been a history with Arkansas. I'm going to get into a lot of different things here, but there's been a history against Arkansas. When he was the coach at UMass, this was a guy that was already an up-and-coming young coach, considered to be a great coach, uh, but had his own share of controversy, not just with stuff that were whispered about NCAA, uh, you know, but, but kind of button heads uh, with different coaches. Uh, you know, when you looked at, at uh, his time at UMass. But Arkansas was coming off that national title in 93-94, preseason number one, Corliss Williams and Scotty Thurman, that whole gang back. By the way, Scotty Thurman, I was talking to him a lot yesterday, uh, and he was telling me this was going to happen. And I stayed off social media, even on Hogville. I just, I, I just backed away. I, I watched the thing go off. My phone was getting flooded all day. So I didn't break this. Uh, I had a... a, a, a a story out. I'm going to add some Scotty Thurman quotes to it today. 
Uh, but Thurman uh, was in that game against UMass to open the 94-95 season in Springfield, Massachusetts, the Hall of Fame tip-off classic. And Arkansas got taken behind, behind the woodshed as a, you know, a, a favorite coming into the season to repeat a national championship. That was John Calipari. That was Lou Rowe. That was Marcus Camby. Uh, what a great UMass team that was. The following season, after Arkansas uh, lost a lot of players and was kind of in, you know, had a huge recruiting class, Arkansas advances to the Sweet 16 uh, in 95-96, only to play a UMass team, get lost that game, and UMass would move on to the Final Four that year, a Final Four that was, again, later vacated. Uh, but there's, So there's been history with John Calipari against Arkansas going back to UMass on huge national st stages with huge stakes. So it tells you how long this guy's been a player on big stages because when Arkansas was at the top under Nolan Richardson at that time, in that little span there, well, it was a big span, but in a stretch of seasons there, Calipari and UMass calculated and factored in. I mentioned Calipari runs off to the NBA. Uh, some of the stuff that, that I guess that was going on at UMass caught up to him a little bit. Uh, so he spent a few seasons in the NBA, and then he comes back at the end of the 90s uh, and takes over at Memphis. So this is interesting. Arkansas had a series just about every year, I mean, it wasn't exactly every year, but it, most of the seasons in the 90s against, you know, really competitive, good Memphis teams, Penny Hardaway, some of the players, uh, Vaughn, some of the guys that came through there uh, when, when Nola Richmond was still coach. Uh, and as you got to the end of the 90s, Arkansas's program uh, was not what it was in the early to mid 90s. And Memphis was about to surge with Calipari coming back to the college game. And now, you know, now he's front and center of a program that he thinks is going to be a national player. So what does he do? He he says that he's no longer going to continue the series against Arkansas, that he considers Memphis to be a national brand. So a lot of Arkansas fans, uh, you know, you know, objected to that kind of language. It was, you know, it, it was definitely meant uh, to, to it, it was arrogant and cocky the way Arkansas fans took it. Uh, and here's a guy that's trying to brand, brand Memphis. And what it really was, what I always thought it was, even though it was a slap in the face, it was him acknowledging, I can't play Arkansas. He didn't want to play Arkansas in non-conference play because he didn't want to risk losing those battles. He just eliminated it. You say, we're the, we're the big kid on the block in the region now. We don't need Arkansas. And it, and it was at a time where Arkansas's returns were diminishing toward the end of the Null and Richard era. So Arkansas actually played Memphis once. Uh, to, to, you know, uh, finish out a contract in that series while Calipari was coach, lost in Memphis by, I think, five points. So at that point, you're 0-3 against Calipari. Uh, fast forward to 2010-11 uh, when Calipari takes over at Kentucky. Spent the last, you know, the past 15 years at Kentucky, I mentioned the national championship, won a lot of recruiting national championships when you looked at it. The one-and-done era, he brought that in. I mean, this guy has, has again, you talk about Nolan Richardson as an innovator in college basketball, which is true. There are other coaches that have done it. Well, this guy has certainly been an innovator when you look at the success he's had at multiple stops, but also recruiting. I think anything in his legacy, you've got to go to the how he how he made the one and done an art form. And I mean, you know, programs like Duke that kind of you know poo pooed that kind of recruiting actually had to had to recruit that way as well. Now we know the transfer portals a big part of that, and, and Cal's had some success with that. But I've kind of wanted to speed you up with the history with Arkansas because the point is this hire, part of what this hire is about is not only relationships with boosters who have really stepped up along with Hunter Yurichek, by the way, but it's also about Calipari always understanding and respecting what Arkansas was. Even when Arkansas was trying to pick itself up as a program while Calipari's often dominating the SEC, the Hogs gradually got better with hire with Mike Anderson. Mike Anderson, you know, swept, one of his teams swept Kentucky uh, in the regular season. We remember the, the Qualls dunk in Fayetteville. Both games went to overtime. But Calipari's been locked into some real battles, uh, ha, you know, won most of the games in those matchups. But Arkansas has, has you know, uh, been right in there against Kentucky, even this year in a bad season for the Hogs, two close games. Uh, and so Calipari understands Arkansas's brand has really been historically the second best behind Kentucky in the SEC, um, not year in and year out up there at the top of the league, but with Mussman and what he's done, had a competitive record against uh, uh, Calipari, especially winning a couple of games uh, in a row in Rupp Arena. Uh, but it continues it, over the years. 
Despite some of the words he used, Calipari understood and respected this program. And so I've spent some time. We're 10 minutes in. Thank you for joining me on Hogville Net YouTube Live on this Monday morning. Total eclipse later. Right now we're talking about t massive, huge college basketball shifting uh, tectonic plate movement. This is incredible. Arkansas's never had a, a, an elite coaching hire in basketball. As great as the program has been, six Final Fours, you know, double digits and Elite Eight, Sweet Sixteens. We know what the stories are. Uh, some of the great players that have passed through these doors. The great coach is Eddie Sutton from Creighton, up and coming from the mid-major. Nolan Richardson from Tulsa. He brought on his resume when Arkansas hired him and Frank Rolls hired Richardson. He'd won an NIT championship uh, at, at Tulsa. And they, back when the NIT meant a little bit more, still not the NCAA tournament, but a more respected postseason tournament. Uh, and he'd also won a junior college national championship, but a mid-major hire. Same with, with Eric Musselman uh, coming out of Nevada. And so Arkansas's best three coaches in program history, they've now added, <laughs> you, you talk about a Hall of Famer, Arkansas's got two coaches in the Hall of Fame, Nolan Richardson and Eddie Sutton. This will be the third coach to come through Arkansas that's a surefire Hall of Famer. This will be the first one who his Hall of Fame resume wasn't built as at Arkansas. Eddie Sutton uh, with a Final Four to lead eight and some of the players he brought in the success he had at Arkansas and then carried over at Oklahoma State uh, his alma mater, obviously the two put together, built his Hall of Fame career, but certainly he doesn't get there without the work he first did at Arkansas. And then, of course, Nolan Richardson, most of what he did to establish himself as a Hall of Famer was as a Razorbacks head coach uh, for more than a decade and a half. But John Calipari, this is interesting. All day yesterday, I'm getting all this source info that the board's going to vote on this. This is almost a done deal. This is going to happen. And I just held my water because we've heard these things so many times. Arkansas never lands this kind of a hire in any sport. They just don't in their big three. They just don't. It, it's a seismic, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's almost unmeasurable how big this is. I mean, we're in the middle of the final four. This news breaks last night. Tonight's the national title game. Talk about an eclipse coming up later today. You've got UConn and, and Purdue, two number one seeds battling out in one of the most talked about championship games uh, in a while. They're all important, but Arkansas's <laughs> dominating the news cycle right now in addition to the national title game. That's a, a huge, you talk about what Eric Melsman brought to the team in terms of social media, branding, and, and, and taking it to another level and bringing it back to Nolan Richardson days. Just on name alone, we're going to talk about what this, mean, what this means in reality moving forward and what the product might look like in recruiting. But, but for now, just the name, just the splash, this is a huge win for Hunter Juracek. We've been talking about the videos that were awkward. I said for a while, those videos look incredible. Even though they were a little goofy, they're, they look incredible if you land the right guy. And nobody saw this coming. Everybody was focused on Beard, including myself. Then we heard other names coming out. We knew Tang had been reporting he'd be next on the list. You know, And so the national folks were jumping on some of this stuff. You know, It moved quickly too. Arkansas is on Beard. That's her number one priority. Beard's getting a raise extension, going to stay uh, at, at, at Ole Miss. Similar with Tang. That one moved really fast. Arkansas's next on the list is Tang. He's there. Then we heard about the two Zoom interviews, the interviews that I was able to confirm were going to happen on Sunday. Daryl Walker at Little Rock, former hog great. Uh, Chris Jans, the Mississippi State head coach that had all that success at New Mexico State before landing that job for the past two seasons at New Mexico State, or excuse me, at Mississippi State. Then you had the fan base. What I saw on social media and on the message boards, they were they were clamoring for something more. They were no, no disrespect. Daryl Walker is a good friend of mine, uh, and I think I, I'm glad he got an opportunity to interview. What a great season he's had. What a great career he's had as a player and NBA coach. He's done good things at Little Rock. Chris Jans is a hell of a coach. Has led Mississippi State. You know, not great conference records, but a good enough overall resume to get to back to back NCAA tournaments. But there is no comparing anybody. I mean, even Chris Beard and some of these names, Will Wade, who I really thought would be a great fit, but he's got the, you know, sinks and show cause for the next season. Little parts, guys. But even those, even those names, as good as they are, and they would have been great hires, there's just nothing that puts Arkansas front and center in college basketball, even up competing against a national title game tonight, like hiring John Calipari. Now, this is a guy 65 years old. This is what we need to talk about because 
you know, I've talked about some of the history. I didn't go deep into it other than just kind of rattling off some of the resume. But here's a guy in his career with well over 800 wins, you know, approaching a 75% winning percentage, well over 400 wins in, in, since being the coach at Kentucky. Uh, and, and he's a guy that when you look at Kentucky's historically great coaches, uh, the one national title in those 15 years, the way he's recruited, you know, there's been a lot of uh, criticism or sometimes criticism for that. But look at what Kentucky's done. This has been, this is still one of the standards in college basketball in terms of regular season success, conference tournament success. You have late, not as good in the NCAA tournament, but still has, you know, um, you know, a, a decade or so ago was really had that program rocking, even though it didn't win national titles, elite eights, final fours. Uh, so there was a lot, a lot of positives there. I mean, four of his final fours are at Kentucky in 15 years. That's better than a 25% rate. That is huge. Um, and so here, so here's the thing moving forward. The reality is the splash right now is huge. The recruiting, we're going to jump into that too, because here's a guy that's got six players all, that he has either committed or signed in the high school class of 2024. And this is what this guy does. And so you start to ask yourself, how soon are we going to start hearing about decommitments and then maybe guys coming with him? This is one of the best recruiters. Yes, the Kentucky brand is part of that. But here's a guy that was recruiting at a high level. Say what you will about it. Arkansas fans looked at that stuff for years and said, something's going on here. We know this. You know, the, the bag is big. We know he came to the state of Arkansas and stole Malik Monk, a five-star, and brought him to Kentucky for a one-and-done season. Uh, you know, Archie Goodwin before that out of Sylvan Hills, another five-star that went and played for Cal. But here's a guy that recruits at a high level. Arkansas is a strong brand. And this hire, by the way, this hire as it broke last night, it was actually broke, broke, it was actually put out there by local folks. Wes Moore, Fox 16, affiliated with KNWA Pictural Nation, who I also do uh, work for. Uh, he's the one that put it out first. But uh, the details I got working my stuff was five years, four, roughly $40 million, maybe a little more, a little north of that, maybe a little south of it, but it's going to land at about $40 million, I'm told, over five years. I'm also told that there has been a pledge. There has been a pledge for between five to six million dollars a year for NIL. Th this is what's important, but you gotta understand, Calipari was making eight and a half million a year at Kentucky. Eight and a half million a year. That's a lot of money. The buyout was huge, but but the boosters ponied up. You know, you hear John Tyson, the Tyson family, longtime friends of Calipari. Uh, you know, you can put focus your eyes there. I'm heard there's uh, folks in central Arkansas. Uh, that jumped in and, and, and to help make this a reality. Uh, so some of those details I don't have all firmed up, uh, but that's, you know, that part I'm hearing source. We'll see what's accurate or what comes out on some of that. But the between five and six million dollars a year for NIL, that put that's a, that's also a game changer for Arkansas uh, package with a guy like Calipari because here's a strong recruiter, a national recruiter. I mean, just going down some of the list, some of these guys I've covered because you know I cover the uh, the, the uh, grassroots scene on, on summer and spring and summer basketball. And some of these guys, Arkansas recruited under Musman, but some of them I've seen and, 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 and been in person to watch some of these guys as they develop the four, you know, four ranked 14th in ESPN's top 100, Jaden, uh, Jaden Quaintance. This guy was a bit of a stock riser uh, in this past recruiting cycle, a six, nine forward 14th ranked in ESPN's top 100, a five-star uh, Janelle Boogie Fland, Another guy that's familiar probably with, with fans of recruiting in, in high school basketball, 6'2 guard, 15th ranked in that top 100, another five-star. Carter Knox has moved down the list a little bit, uh, but a four, so now a four-star ranked number 24th in the country, uh, another 6'5 guard. Billy Richmond out of Memphis, speaking of Calipari and his Memphis ties, Arkansas had great Memphis connections back in the day. We know this under Richardson. But Billy Richmond ranked 39th in the country, a four-star, 6'6 small forward wing, 40, number 46 player in the country, Samtu Surreal, 6'10 center out of Atlanta. And then the 71st uh, rated player, a, a 6'1 guard out of Kentucky, Travis Perry. So you've got six players that were committed or signed with Kentucky. We'll see what happens. We'll see if some of those guys or any of those guys wait to see the new hires for Kentucky or what other schools they might be interested in. We know of the thing about getting a coach this late 
you know, here we are in April. We're past April Fool's Day. Uh, in, in past years, uh, Reed Shepard going to the NBA, that's the other thing. What players on Kentucky's roster might be looking to transfer? Reed Shepard's a guy that I think uh, is an NBA player. It's a young man I covered and saw play in person more than a handful of times. Uh, you know, he's a, uh, you know, he's a very, he's an elite shooter. When you look at his percentages from three, he's a good enough ball hitter to play the one. He's a little undersized as a two, but he's smart enough. He understands spacing and how to get to spots playing off the ball. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of cerebral stuff on the offensive end that he brings. He, he is a playmaker as well. Really hurt Arkansas in that role at times in two games last year. Uh, but going back to the recruiting part of it, you know, what, what can Calipari do here with any of these players uh, to get him to follow him to Arkansas? Late in the recruiting site, late in coach search season, here we are in April, and it, and it is late to add a coach. And so on, historically, you always think about, well, it's just so hard to catch up in recruiting. Arkansas is basically trying to replace an entire roster. I mean, you're down to one player that still hasn't made an announcement to lead, to go in the portal or, uh, you know, uh, do something else or lost it, ran out of eligibility. Uh, it's a big name, Trevor in Brazil. Uh, but here's a guy that I expect probably will look at testing the draft water, see what, what is, you know, what his uh, potential is for that potentially look at a transfer. Uh, but a hire like this has got to make him pause and consider maybe sticking around for another year, given that the season, what he wasn't, what he wanted, his draft stock slid. Um, and then you wonder, is there anybody in the portal that a John Calipari would be interested in? But the point I'm trying to make about trying to recruit now, yeah, the portal is going to have to supplement. We thought before this hire that it meant whoever came in was going to have to just go wild in the portal and, and maybe settle on some get bodies with pulses, given there's nobody left except Brazil and there's no guarantee he comes back. Calipari's already got six signed or committed players to Kentucky, and you got to think he's going to pull some of that some really highly rated guys. I've said forever, you cannot live on portal meat alone and you can't live on high school meat alone. You got to have more in your diet. You got to have a mix of those different kinds of things. You, you know, you, you, it's what's for dinner. If you want to have success at this level, it, it can't be one or the other. And, you know, Calipari has been one of the ones that's had to deal with some of that. Uh, you know, used to, it was the one and done. Uh, and that also had mixed results, but I think, I think having a good blend of it. So maybe he can get three three or four of these guys. I'm just throwing out a number. Uh, and then most of it will have to come out of the portal at that point. But at least you've got a chance here to land some really highly rated guys that could come in and have a huge impact on a season uh, right away. And so I think it's important to remember. But again, a hire like this, you don't have to worry about building relationships. This guy's got all the relationships built. He's got no problem recruiting an NIL, such a major player anyway, where the relationships move a little further down the list of importance for a lot of guys that are looking, that are difference makers, that, are, that have plenty of options. Now you're, you've got a guy that can, can bring anybody to the table and be a player immediately. And even though it's not Kentucky any longer, it's still a strong brand. It's still a place with a lot of bells and whistles on top of now, apparently, a strong NIL package for, for, for uh, John Calipari to work with. So that's a big deal. So when we start talking about how does this land, it's a big name nationally. It's as big as it gets in college basketball. And, and you know, now you're talking about, okay, what motivated a guy after 15 years to make a move like this? This isn't a guy that's got the, the same fire in his belly when you talk about being in the prime of his career. Let's just talk about that fact as, as, as what it is. Do a little Napoleon Dynamite chug there. So to me, this is the biggest thing. What does this mean in terms of once you once you get all the headlines in college basketball, and it's been, I mean, you know, you've got CNN, ESPN, all, you know, any place you would turn to, uh, you know, talking about this, uh, it's a big deal. It's just as big a coaching hire as you can. It's the biggest coaching hire a change in college basketball that I can think of in recent years, it's huge. This is a huge spot for Arkansas to be in. And, and after you've let go, a, a, a good coach has walked, a really good coach, even after a bad year, this is the response. This is the response. Nobody saw this coming. It's huge. But what's the reality moving forward? You're talking about a guy 
at 65 years old. I speculated on Hogville yesterday as this stuff started to go. I didn't put any source information on this one. I just let this one play out. But I did talk about, you know, if, if, if Calipari is going to walk away from Kentucky, yeah, the results haven't been great there. Kentucky may be ready to move on and look for, for, for something else in its future. Uh, is this the future of Arkansas? Well, it is for the next five years. And it can be a really good five years and really help our, continue to help Arkansas's brand because folks are going to be paying attention. They're going to want to tune into this. This is going to be appointment basketball for Arkansas in a lot of matchups in a lot of ways. Let's not forget that Arkansas plays Kentucky at least once every year. In the past two seasons, uh, you know, you've had a round robin home and away. Uh, so eyes will always be on that. Uh, but just about a lot of matchups where Calipari's, uh, you know, uh, been locked in against some of these other SEC schools teams. I mean, this just carries so much weight for Arkansas in terms of branding and prestige and respect. But then there's a reality. What does the wins and losses look like? Recruiting is going to be a big part of that. Calipari, when we look at what he's done lately, I mean, he had Kentucky in just this past season, a young team with some, with a mix of some transfers, had that team ranked in the top 10 often in the year, top 20, uh, really good offensive team. We know the, the Wildcats got bounced by Oakland in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So a fit, very, you know, face palm at the end there. But the point is, it's not like this guy has 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 run out of ways to to win and, and be and have his team relevant in college basketball. It's not the same, but he's still been steady and solid. So you've got so you know that at 65, he's still got a little gas in the tank to make Arkansas relevant beyond just his name and the initial bounce and attention and what you know even the first season folks paying attention to it. Who knows what the results will be this year? We got to see how the recruiting goes for him but he might already have a head start based on some of the stuff I talked about. But I think the other thing is in these next five years, because I speculated it'd be three to five years, this guy gets a chance to, to leave college basketball for however much longer he coaches on his own terms. It's a pressure cooker at Kentucky. The guy was there 15 years, had success, not as much success as that program wanted. We know what the expectations are. Uh, but here's a guy that you hope comes in with some level of energy some level of, okay, I'm not done yet. You need that. And so this is a, this is uncharted waters because not only has he been at Kentucky the last 15 years, uh, you know, arguably the top program of all time, uh, but he's also nearing the end of his career. Let's face it, when you're 65, you, 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 you know, five more years is, is probably about right. And so hopefully he's got the fire and, and, and wants to, you know, go out not only on his terms, but with success and have another place where he has success. And so while it's hard to necessarily project a Final Four run here, we know the guy's capable of it. We know he can recruit the kind of players that gives you a chance for that at any point. Um, and in the meantime, I do think, uh, given all of his strengths that we know he still has, it, it, it does put keep Arkansas and give Arkansas a chance to be in that top picking order in, in the SEC moving forward. As strong as the league, league is, uh, th this guy coming to Arkansas doesn't weaken anything. Uh, Arkansas has not weakened its position. And again, in, in several factors, it strengthened it. So this is a huge win. I think the biggest part of that is just the, the branding and, and, and th just how, it, uh, just how this guy is an iconic coach. I mean, he's beyond just a hall of famer. He is iconic. There's no other way to look at it from coast to coast. This is a name that everybody knows in sports whether you follow basketball or not. In just about any sport around the country, if you don't follow basketball, you know who John Calipari is. Now you know that he's at, at Arkansas as the head coach of the Razorbacks men, men's basketball program. So again, this is absolutely huge. There, there's, no, um, there's no other way to see this. To me, there's just not many negatives. I know people are gonna bring up the sanctions and stuff. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Uh, Calipari managed to elude show causes in those, as far as I can remember. Uh, but again, those UMass, Memphis, um, and, and we live in a we live in a world now where players, college players, college athletes, amateurs are no longer amateurs. They get paid nil. Uh, a lot of coaches have felt for a long time that players should get paid, or they should be able to help players when they when they went against the rules. I'm not justifying it. I'm saying, you know. Some of the rules, though, have now bended toward 
the justice of players should be getting something. The idea that they should be part of that free market that coaches benefit from. Some coaches were a little ahead of the game on that, even if they broke or bent the rules. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on that other than to acknowledge it, not ignore the fact that that is part of why he had a couple of Final Fours, one at UMass, one at Memphis, you know, wiped away from the slate. Uh, but here's a guy that's had major success. We're talking about everywhere he's been in the, in the college game, and that's why he's already an icon before, before he steps away. Uh, you know, Coach K retiring not that long ago. The biggest coaching name, in my opinion, in college basketball over the last several decades, but John Calipari is right there. He's next. You know, Rick Pitino, another f famous Kentucky coach, coached at Louisville, another big name in the college game. There are other ones. Tom Izzo at Michigan State. I mean, I don't need to run down the list. You know who most of them are. But none of them are as big as this one. Only Coach K was. And so Arkansas's got... Literally a, a college basketball living legend as its new head coach. And again, that is, again, I can't, as good as Arkansas has been, Hall of, two Hall of Fame coaches preceding this guy, but they came from the mid-major levels and they built their name. They built their, they established a Hall of Fame career beginning at Arkansas and in Richardson's case, mostly at Arkansas, uh, the vast majority of his work. And so this will be a little bit different. This is a, a surefire Naismith Hall of Famer. Uh, a guy that's in and, you know, now he's at Arkansas. And so this is a, you know, this is different. This is different. And uh, the results will be what they are moving forward. Uh, but I think the results right now, you can't argue with. I'm, I love the recruiting part of it. I, you know, I love getting out and, and watching players develop and seeing what they become uh, and then being able to talk about them intelligently and not just see names and what their rankings are and then have to figure out what they can do on the court once they start playing at the college game. I like to see them bef well before that and start projecting ahead. And so when I look at a guy like Calipari to see what he's done and, and bumping into him on the road at some of these grassroots events, you know, uh, being introduced to him once or twice, I'm not one that is typically starstruck. Not even, no, I'm not when I meet coaches. I've never been that way. But at the same time, when I'm looking at a Coach K or I get introduced to somebody like that, I, I'm sitting back and I'm looking at him going, this this name is as good as it gets in this sport. It, it, when you start talking about it from an all-time, I and mean, this guy is, it will be among the names when you go all the way back, a top 10 name, which is a huge statement. That's huge. And so Arkansas's got that right now. Um, and we'll see what this ride provides. We'll, we'll see if he's able to build on his legacy at Arkansas. The one thing you hope is this is not just a, you know, a way for him to, you know, right off into the sunset and gear it down. You don't want him to gear it down. You want him to be hungry. You want him to still have something to prove. Uh, you want him to go in and, do, and work to make Arkansas uh, the best basketball program in the country. You want that to be what he's, what he's on board for. And so I think that's something that Hog fans, yes, it's exciting right now, and it should be. But I think our, Hog fans shouldn't be satisfied just with a hire. Hog fans should want the best out of this. And, and, and that would be results, measured results on the court, in recruiting, all the areas that matter to make your, to keep your program uh, at or near the top in, in college basketball. And look, Eric Melson with back to back, back elite eight, sweet 16, mixed results lately, especially in SEC play, but still what a great run. Those three seasons and only five years in the program, that was huge to help lift things back up. Uh, Mike Anderson before him, taking it out of the gutter, out of the gutter and making it respectable, having some success, not postseason success like Hog fans wanted, but getting it to that next level for Mussman to take the torch. And now you've got this guy. And so we'll see what's left. 65 years old, I think it's a great hire. Uh, you know, Chris Beard would have been a great hire. Will Wade with the show cause and some sanctions. I think if you look beyond a year, would have been a great hire. It's all, you know, just, just cursory contact, nothing that could move forward there but we're not going to focus on what didn't happen now because we're not talking about settling on a hire if we were talking about settling on a hire then we'd probably spend more times on what arkansas didn't do right what your honey your check failed to do you know and and uh, but boosters st stepped up here hunter your check along with the boosters went out and did something nobody saw coming no one expected and gives arkansas the kind of gravitas like okay all right, we know Arkansas has had its ups and downs, had great program 30 years ago, 
some good success, really good national state success in the last recent years. You package it up all together. It's, it's a top 10, 15 program all time. But this adds some proof of concept that now Arkansas can, can say here, we've not only got, we've not only proven we can win in a big, on the biggest stages, but now we can step up with NIL. Now we can pay you. I mean, this guy's going to make just, you know, roughly what he was making in Kentucky, eight and a half million dollars there a year. I'm told around eight million here, maybe eight or a little slightly more than that, but it, you know, going to settle in around eight million a year. He, he's not, he's not taking much of a hit to his pay. So that's strong. That, that is strong. That says who, all the folks that are stepping up on this is not going to let, refuse to let Arkansas sports take any more shots uh, in perception around the country. Uh, some of that stuff, I think Arkansas fans uh, obviously take it harder than maybe national folks who have a, have a quick laugh and move on and they understand Arkansas sports is still pretty good. Uh, but I think, you know, internally, locally, in the fan base, some of this stuff when it comes to coaching searches kind of plays out like a broken record. It's, it's not what, you know, you, don't, you never get number one or two on the list, it seems like. And that's, pr that's true of a lot of programs. Even programs that are above Arkansas in any given sport, they go through their periods where they struggle to get a hire. It's happened at Kentucky. We know that. It's happened elsewhere. Louisville's gone through some of that lately. Uh, but at the same time, Arkansas typically doesn't make the kind of hires that get national attention. Uh, this is one that's an all-time game changer just in terms of, it, it, I mean, you, again, you've got a college basketball living legend you just lured away from arguably the best program in the country and the best program in the country is going to say, you know, you know, folks know around there that this was coming and it was getting time. So it's not like, again, Arkansas got him in his prime, but he's still a hell of a coach, still an elite recruiter, and this could still be huge in terms of the results, how it plays out for this program. And so moving forward, I expect they'll t there to be, I haven't seen the press, press release uh, on when we'll actually have the uh, the announcement ceremony some of the details on the contract are being worked out today um and so i'm a, I'm, I'm guessing we'll either have it tuesday or wednesday uh i was told a few days ago going into the weekend and i tweeted this out uh that, that folks that are important to the program who they want in were told to be prepared to come to fayetteville early in the week <clears throat> to you know tuesday wednesday uh gets that done i mean you you only went even if you have your press conference on Wednesday, that is a week removed. It seems like a year ago when, when Eric P. Melsman officially accepted the job at USC. That was on Thursday. It seems like a year ago. So if you have, I mean, we already know about it today so or yesterday. So it was even fewer days than that that we knew about the hire. But, I mean, once you have your, your, your celebration in your press conference to announce it, media, uh, invited guests, all that will happen at Bud Walton Arena either Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. Uh, but even after that happens and you're hitting the ground running from there and doing the real work, you were only a week removed from the other guy hitting the door and leaving town. It's a big deal. That, that's efficiency. That's time efficiency. And it is late in the coach season, cert season. It is late in portal recruiting. Do you think this guy has not been doing work in the portal before this move? Again, you look at the high school commits or signing six. Some of that's going to benefit Arkansas now. I, you know, you got to think it will. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. But I'll be surprised if it doesn't. Um, and again, NIL. What do they say? Money talks and everything else takes the bus. I think it, I pulled that. I stole that from Wolf of Wall Street. But that's true. And so NIL... And you got a guy like this that guys want to come and play for. Um, so I think Arkansas can overcome some of the obvious hurdles coming into this hire with the roster. You know, again, Trevor Brazil is the last man standing. We'll see if there are any players in the portal that Calipari wishes to bring back or, 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 or pursues. Uh, you know, that's always a possibility. But it's also a possibility that he, you know, again, by combination of his own portal recruiting and some of these high school guys, we'll see how he puts it all together. But there's a chance Arkansas is very competitive in year, in year one under Calipari. 
very good chance. In fact, this is, again, this guy, uh, you know, mostly ups, you know, not a ton of titles. Make no mistake. This will be, well, this will be, oh, this will be the talk of, of the, of the, I mean, tonight's national title game, uh, you talk about an eclipse, you know, <laughs> The sun's going to move in front of the, the sun being the hiring of Calipari in some ways is going to move in front of the game itself. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll do a good job uh, of covering the game, obviously, but this is going to be a talking point. It's going to be a talking point on national coverage. It just, it just is. It's John Calipari. It's a move from Kentucky, which is, you know, again, Kentucky, you can chop it up how you want it. Kentucky, Duke, you know, what else is out there? North Carolina, Kansas, you know, that, that, you know, those are the big four, in my opinion, <clears throat> when you look at it. And uh, Kentucky's arguably at the top of that heap. <clears throat> and in some ways, Calipari, even though there's been regression there in terms of the impact that he's had uh, in the NCAA tournament and some of the other things, he's still, you know, a, a, a top name. He just is. When Coach K retired, he became the most named synonymous with college basketball. He just is. And there are some other great coaches. But but he's been too good for too long uh, not to still have some, some, some power shots uh, in his game uh, bringing him to Arkansas. And so that's, you know, once we get beyond the initial splash and bounce uh, and shock waves, they'll be, you know, around college basketball, then the real work kicks in. And I think this guy still has something. Uh, five more years, I think is probably what you see, you know, I, I, anything beyond that and success beyond that. And it would, if he remained and to remain at Arkansas and ride out from here would be great. Obviously fans want to see that. Uh, but I, you know, you know, we just saw Eric Melsman with five, I think Calipari, you know, that's probably what this is. It, it probably is a, 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 a five year, you know, one contract and done type of thing, but we'll see. But that's what I would expect. But well, I mean, again, and I think the other thing is, you know, there's a lot of people in Kentucky, they're going to look at this and they're going to have a different narrative. We were, it was time. And that's probably true too. Two things can be true at once. This could be a win-win for both. And I really don't care how Kentucky comes out of this. I'm sure the Wildcats will do fine. Um, but the point is, is that Arkansas has done fine. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't see an angle to this where this wasn't good. I just don't. And, and a lot of the angles are great. The optics are really great right now. And um, again, can, can he, can, can Calipari still have enough in the tank to help Arkansas get to a final four while he's here? Maybe. And that'd be great. Be the seventh in school history and the first since the early nineties in Nolan. And again, Calipari has been around, you know, some classic battles against Nolan, uh, Nolan, some of Nolan's best Arkansas teams. You know, had the one game against Arkansas in the early 2000s in Memphis. While he, then he got rid of that series, and and had a lot of Arkansas fans, you know, not happy with the way his reasoning behind that because Memphis was going to be a national brand, effectively saying Arkansas wasn't worthy of it. Worthy of it. What he was really saying is Arkansas is worthy of it because he knows that, and he has to he has to have that messaging and get away from that series because he doesn't want Arkansas to have success in that series, and detract from maybe Memphis becoming a national brand. So it was actually, in my opinion, it was always a compliment, but publicly it was not, you know, it was something you say and, and it really pissed off the Arkansas fan base. But what he knew was, is that he didn't want to give Arkansas an inch and a chance. Uh, and it was a smart move, I guess. I mean, I, who knows how that would have played out had he continued that series, but he was forced to play Arkansas once he got to Kentucky uh, and, and won most of those. I mean, let's face it. He did. Uh, but Arkansas won some big games in there, including recently. And so now he takes over at a place that he's really, you can, it's obvious, aside from the money part relationships with boosters, that he's had a high amount of respect for. And I'll say, uh, you know, uh, I'll say that even since Arkansas has been in the SEC, not only winning a title once joining the league under Nolan Richard in those early years in the league, uh, but even with its problem areas and snags and dark days, uh, even uh, even even with those before Eric Mussman, I still contend that Arkansas was the second best program for basketball in the league next to Kentucky. Eric Mussman helped raise that idea 
if you didn't believe it before. And this guy continues that idea. This guy continues that idea. And it's a league full of great coaches. Rick Barnes at Tennessee. Bruce Pearl, uh, obviously, at, at Auburn, previously at Tennessee. Nate Oates, what a run he's had. And then getting Alabama to its first Final Four. Chris Beard, uh, one year at, at Ole Miss. We know he's been in a national coach, uh, uh, a national coach of the year when you uh, and, and got into a national title game at Texas Tech just five or six seasons ago. So this is a league. I could go down the list of just outstanding coaches. And the SEC in basketball wasn't always the way. It's gotten better and better. But John Calipari stays in the SEC. He still has something to say. He's at a program that can get it done. He's got NIL to back it. And, you know, this is, again, a great hire for the Arkansas Razorbacks at a great time, at a great time. I mean, this would have been a big splash no matter what. But how about with all the coaching moves so far, Louisville gets a coach, USC gets a coach, some other significant coaching hires, you know, Michigan, Ohio State, you know, looking around the landscape a little bit. Uh, in fact, Michigan, Ohio State, and USC, just those three alone with the expansion of the Big Ten and USC and, and UCLA joining that league, but having having c big coaching changes at those big schools, uh, you know, tells you that there's going to be a lot of – that, that the Big Ten will look different, not only by a, a addition with the new schools, but by some of those coaching changes. But in the SEC – Arkansas, if you were worried about losing a guy like Melsman and where do you go next, and you thought you struck out on your top, really your top choice, I don't think anybody passed Beard except for Will Wade, uh, Arkansas fans were clamoring for. Uh, and, and because nobody really saw this coming, uh, this lands, I mean, this started coming out, you know, the, the, just the idea of it came out Friday. And, it, and for me, the first thing I did, was it elicited a chuckle. Uh, Saturday, and especially getting into Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, hearing more about it, but just not believing it. I just couldn't. I couldn't believe it. And, and a couple of the sources were like, man, I'm telling you, this, this could be a thing. And then late Saturday night, the announcements of the Jans interview and the Daryl Walker interview seemed more like it, given you miss Beard, and I guess Tang was the next one. Uh, and that seemed more, more like, okay, this, you know, they're, they're, they're putting out some interview stuff. Uh, and this may be where it's headed. So it got a little bit quiet for a minute on, on the Calipari thing. And then that thing started picking up steam once we got into Sunday. And I, I it, it took me uh, a full two hours, two, two hours before it actually broke to start believing it. Uh, that, that, and, and I'd been hearing stuff before that. And some of it seemed solid, but I was like, I just can't, you know, here's a guy that loves the attention. He, this, he likes his name out there. You know, uh, season didn't end how he liked it. There's some unrest up there, and people grumbling, and maybe it's time, and, and the attention, and 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 that, and then that would give him a little bounce. This is this was real. Th this is real, and so I guess something could still blow up on it. I mean, Arkansas has had a hire in Dana Altman that, you know, and I don't. I'm not trying to jinx this or say bring up something that fans don't want to go back to, but it is happening at Arkansas where guys accepted a job. Brought on campus with the press conference, had an awkward, you know, hog call, had a sleepover, and then got out of town and went back to Creighton. Uh, you know, this is this is now so many eyes on this. That's not a reality here, I don't think. But it's a point that things happen and blow things up in, in college sports sometimes. So I throw that in there all in to say, you know, we'll, to me that's less than a fraction of a percent of a, a chance. But, you know, I'm saying anything can happen, I guess. You fans are going nuts on a Wildcat podcast. I was just watching. So nuts, glad that he's gone, or nuts, freaking out because they don't know what's next. I mean, anytime you have a, a vacancy, there's a lot of uncertainty, even with a brand like Kentucky. And I mentioned it earlier. I didn't go through the details. But Kentucky, you know, uh, kind of was wandering there for a while uh, before getting Calipari. That, that's, you know, that's, you know, the Billy Gillespie stretch. Tubby Smith, who won a national title, um, you know, for a while there, hung on there for a while there, and, and uh, the Big Blue Nation was was not content. But he didn't win a national title. Will he skip the hog call at the press conference? Man, I don't know there's any way possible to do that for anybody. You can't. 
Nobody's bigger than the hog call, man. Calipari sign up being on staff is part of this deal. That doesn't surprise me. We got our guy. Look, I mean, Chris Beard would have been a home run hire. John Calipari is a home run hire. Not for the same reasons, but, you know, Calipari, again, that name, that name, that's it's, that's on everybody's radar. It just will be until he retires. He's, he's one of those guys. And it's amazing, too, because, again, when you stack him up against the greats, He's got one national title. He's got one. Been in two national title games. You know, again, one of those was at a Final Four at Memphis that's been vacated. Um, so, you know, but, I mean, it, it's not like he's just a great recruiter and somehow gets jobs. And I mean, he's won at a high level. His winning percentage is way up there. His success winning regular season conference tournaments, or excuse me, regular season championships and conference tournament championships everywhere he's been the recruiting game again has been best in college basketball when you package it all up there's no doubt about it he's number one the greatest recruiter arguably of all time probably is Bronny James to Arkansas I mean that's that's a name that's a big name you know you know he's a good player I, I, you know he's also entered in the NBA draft pool and, and I don't know that he's an uh, NBA player, or at least not one that I would even say right now you'd risk a draft on, r draft pick on, except because of the, the, the obvious reason, his dad. So from selling ticket standpoint, he's probably draftable. In any other scenarios, probably not. But on the college level, good player? Yeah, he could be a good player on, the, on this level. And that would bring more gravitas from a player standpoint in that name. So that that's the kind of thing about Calipari. It's going to open up stuff that in, even when Arkansas had it going with Musselman and before him, Nolan Ripson and Eddie Sutton, they got great players. And they ended up getting, you know, having some great players and great guys that went on to the NBA. You got the Hall of Famer, Sidney Moncrief. Joe Johnson, I expect, will be when he finally retires at some point. How far do the beard interests go? It depends on who you ask. I had a couple of good sources that are close to his camp or in his camp that told me, look the other way, look somewhere else. One of them said he's going to play this for a raise, that, that this is going to be played for a raise. And this was going in. This, these were com one of the comments was made before Mulsman was announced to USC. That was on Thursday. Everybody was gearing up for beard. And I, you know, I tried to push back. Is this just pessimism? Is this just, you know, you're going to, you know, you got a 50-50 chance of being correct on that. No, you know, no, the, the, he, he's, he, he'll, he'll play it for a raise. That was one angle. Another angle is he wanted to come uh, and something fell through, you know. Uh, so, you know, I don't know what's truth on that. I don't. I, you know, I'm going off with some sources. Some other really good connections. Um, but, the, but the part about where Arkansas was in the contract talks with Beard, I honestly don't know which version of some of the stuff I've heard uh, is pristine and would land as the truth. So, you know, make of it what you will. It doesn't matter now. Arkansas didn't settle. I think we'd be talking a lot more about Beard and why they should have went hard after Will Wade at McNeese State. I think we'd have been talking a lot more about this had this hire not been, you know, had it been a, a what at least visually uh, would have landed as as a as, you know something less than what Arkansas just lost, something less than some of the names they might have should maybe did or should have gone after. We don't have to do that now. John Calipari, it, it, it's, you know, it, I mean, again, this is a guy, when you say Cal in college basketball, people aren't thinking about Berkeley. They're thinking about John Calipari, you know? And so he, he's one of those guys where, you know, you, you have all you have to do is say his nickname and everybody, and, you're, and you say basketball, everybody knows what you're talking about. So, are, you know, this, I mean, other, you know, I could make an argument that, that, you know, if, if pressed, I could say, well, Beard might have been a better hire because, you know, I could make a case for that, but I don't have to make that case. There's no reason to do that. This is an, this is an incredible hire. It's an historic hire for Arkansas. It just is. The, the, it, you look at all the sports. There's been a lot of success, but no, no name in a hire and a coaching hire has ever been this. And now we can say that for a lot of schools. I mean, how many how many times do schools have an opportunity to get 
a living legend in the profession and, and, and who can still do it, who can still get it done. And he's not getting it done at the level he was a decade ago. But he's still been really, really good. And Arkansas has been a really, really good program. Sometimes great. This guy's been great at times. Is there greatness still left in him? I think so. I think for in recruiting there is. And he's got the resources, and he's got a place where we know you can win at big levels. So I, I think there's a, a you know more than a puncher's chance, uh, you know, to 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 have a run and even to the Final Four. And everybody wants that again. One hell of a sigh. I think it's more than a sigh. I, you know, um, a Chris Beard hire. That's a home run. That's more than a sigh. That's like okay. We're not sighing around here. We're 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 coming. We we we, we you know we 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 made it through the championship rounds here in this hiring process. When that didn't happen, it deflated sales. All the names that were coming out was like no 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 not good enough. This is not a sigh situation. This is a wow situation. It just is. I'm going to wrap this up in an hour. I'm 56 minutes in. Just a few more minutes to go. The highlights are John Calipari, Arkansas gets John convinces John Calipari to leave Lexington. He was going to be the Wildcats head coach for a 16th season next year, if not for this move. We know Eric Melsman left a few days ago, and this is how Arkansas responds. I'm told $5 million, uh, just either right at 40 or just north of $40 million for those five years. Uh, so effectively $8 million a year. He's making eight and a half Kentucky. Between 5 and $6 million pledge commitment, the NIL coffers are strong. That's strong. That's going to land top 10 in, in college basketball. It should. And we'll see, you know, when some of the numbers start really coming out for this next cycle, where, where other programs are, but that's strong. What your boosters did was step up. And I've always said this. I know it's a – Arkansas in the SEC. I know it's a football-crazy state, and, 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 and it should be. But Arkansas, the school, historically has been better in basketball. The talent that comes from the high school levels in this state – from all over the state, especially Central Arkansas, but other places, north, south, southwest, west, east, you know, southeast. It's really more of a basketball state in terms of what it can produce to help Arkansas maintain national relevance and, and be a pipeline. And we know it's a one school state with no pro teams. And so that's always the goal. This is a basketball state. This was an acknowledgement from boosters that Arkansas is a basketball brand. It's not saying that it can't be a football brand, but it's saying they're making damn sure that it's a basketball brand. And, I, and so Calipari now is a guy, when you start talking about recruiting and not needing, I mean, Arkansas typically, its greatest teams, the, the, the lifeblood has come from it within the state or the footprint states. Calipari has reach. And so we'll see how that reach, how that works now that he's a, that Razorbacks head coach. Say that out loud. Arkansas head coach John Calipari. Razorbacks head coach. Hoop Hogs, the head hog is John Calipari. That's strong. That is strong. And so recruiting is going to shift for Arkansas. Uh, Mussman did some uh, some good stuff in recruiting outside of the state, but his best players, mostly from in-state, you know, Anthony Black, Jordan Wall, some of the guys out of the portal, obviously helped, uh, and those were big as well. But Calipari – is going to have, you know, it, it goes up a level now. The recruiting goes up a level. And so this hire, five years, $40 million, between 5 and $6 million in NIL. And now Arkansas is one of those brands coming off of, <laughs> coming off a 16 and 17 season. One of the worst, I mean, it was the worst season in 14 or 15 years, depending upon how you chopped it up. SEC record, an overall losing record. And, and this is where you land. A few weeks later after the season ends and a few days after your coach who brought a lot of success in the pre three previous seasons, this is how you land. This is strong. And it, again, the leadership in the program has taken so many pot shots, so many question marks, and a lot of those are valid. I'm not going to say, ha ha, you were wrong. Well, who knew who, who was wrong until this? And it's not about being wrong. It's about stepping up and making this happen. They went from looking weak or or, or middle of the road at best, uh, at, you know, when we're talking about folks that can go out and make hires to now looking like the toast of the town 
not just around here in Arkansas fans, but a lot of people around the country are going to be talking about Arkansas and not in negative ways, but in, wow, wow, this is big. And it gives Arkansas more credibility. I just rolled an hour. I want to thank you for joining me in Hogville Net YouTube Live. I've enjoyed this. Uh, I wanted to come on last night. I just didn't have any more gas in the tank. Just, just didn't have it. I could barely keep my eyes open. They're probably barely open right now. I haven't been sleeping much this week, but it's been a lot of fun. Search season is crazy. When it impacts the team you cover, it's even crazier. Uh, man, uh, some of the Razorbacks that have been reaching out, former Razorbacks have been reaching out to me the last few days. Recruits that were on the board for the previous staff and hope to still be. Uh, just a lot, a lot of conversations about where this was going. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, and I think everybody, I, I, I'll be shocked if there's any portion of the fan base that, that's not on board with this one. This is a home run hire. And it's not just a home run, it's a grand slam. It's a grand slam. Let's just go there. But the Arkansas Razorbacks have their man. Hall of Famer John Calipari, one of the biggest names all time in the game, the greatest recruiter of all time probably. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, you could say is, is right now the biggest name in college basketball head coach in terms of a legacy. The, he's now an Arkansas Razorback. Like I said, press conference either tomorrow likely or Wednesday. We'll see what the announcement is. I'll, I'll get some kind of a release as an advance to tell me uh, when it is. Uh, and then I'll, I'll tweet that out. It may be out as I'm doing this. I don't know that yet. I need to check my emails. But I want to thank you again for joining me on Hallville Net YouTube Live. John Calipari from the Blue Blood Kentucky Wildcats, the Arkansas Razorbacks. we got a lot more to talk about. Recruiting, what this means, what his staff, has anybody retained? Ronnie Bird Jr. didn't even bring his name up. We'll see if he has a role. But until next time, I'll see you then.